Hey there, it's Quick Tip Video Time. Today's quick tip is on Vary Audio. Before I get too into this video, if you've not used Vary Audio before, just be aware that there are some more basic videos on the Quick Tip YouTube channel that cover the fundamentals of how to use Vary Audio. For now, let's open up Vary Audio by double clicking on the lead vocal audio event. Now that we've got Vary Audio loaded up in front of us, it's probably time to tell you that today we're not really going to be using it for pitch correction. Maybe on this first note. I'm going to use this one note to demonstrate everything today. So I'm going to make sure this is in tune. And I'm just holding down shift and moving my mouse up and down until I'm happy with it. Once I'm happy with it, it's a matter of right mouse clicking on that single event. And now I can go down to process. You can see how many different audio processes we can apply to this one note. I've selected envelope and now I'm going to hit preview. Now I'm actually drawing an envelope in on this one vocal event. It gets a bit tedious with the preview, but editing is kind of tedious at times. So it's about finding the right envelope. When I find something I like, I can hit process. If it's something I think I might want to apply to multiple events, I can store the preset and recall it. Let's move on. Right mouse clicking again, I'm going down to the next menu, which is plugins. Now you'll notice that you can select any number of plugins to put over the top of this one vocal event in Vary Audio. I've got Fab Filter, Timeless 2. I can go through the various presets or I can edit the parameters myself. Down the bottom, I can also change things like the tail length, or I can mix between a dry and a wet sound. When I'm finished, I hit process. But for demonstration purposes, I want to do so much more to this one vocal event than just put an effect on it. I'm going to make regions visible over on the right hand side of the sample edit window. I've selected that event, and now I'm going over to the region menu, and I'm going to select add region and name it break. Now people say there's no sampler in Cubase, but check this out. I'm loading up an instance of Groove Agent SE, which is empty, and I'm just dragging and dropping that region straight over onto the first pad. That's actually pretty freaking cool. And it gets better. I'm going to turn on the MIDI input from my external MIDI keyboard, and now I'm controlling those pads with my external MIDI keyboard. You can control it with any external controller. That's not actually the cool thing. We're getting to that. Hold down Alt with your left hand, and drag this vocal hit and copy it over from pad to pad. Break. Now we've got four instances of that vocal Break. hit as a sample that we can Break. completely mess with or play live. But let's do the mess with Break. bit first. Break. I'm changing the tuning on Break. the second and the third pad so that they sound different to the first one. Break. 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 So I can play all three of them together as a chord. I'm panning the second Break. one to the left and the third one to the right, just to give it some stereo imaging. I'm also changing the fine tuning of the third pad. I can turn on a filter for any number of these pads, but we'll deal with filters in a moment. I can go and draw on an envelope for pitch, filter, or amp. That's giving me a softer entry into the sample. And I can do that for every pad. Now I'm turning on the auxiliary send for the first pad, and I'm assigning it to a stereo delay. Let's do the same for the second pad. Just select it, turn the auxiliary up, and we're ready to go. Do the same for the third pad. Okay, I said we could trigger it live, but now we can actually go and record these samples inside of the track just to give an added effect or added ambience to the track itself. Notice what we're recording there is actually MIDI data. So we can go back and change it or quantize it. Now let's start messing with the cutoff. Now 
I can go and change the filter type and add some distortion. People can talk about the difference in doors all day, and yes, there are differences in doors, but for me, this is one of the reasons I love using Cubase. It's fun, it's creative, and it just all works together so well. Thanks for taking the time to stop by. I'll catch you next time.